Hello, this is Rebecca Freedom, and this is episode number 29 of Heard Not Seen, produced by John Beethan. Today, we are going to be talking about the topic of the power of friendship. So I'll tell you what friendship isn't. So Facebook (laughs) is a directory. It's a directory of people and sort of an imprint of their lives according to what they decide they want to post. And for the majority, most people post vacation pictures or the food they ate that smor- this in the morning or the coffee that's so pretty or, you know, the, the highlight reel. A lot of it is the highlight reel uh, that, that people see and, and investigate. In fact, if you think about it, um, Facebook has made, you know, stalking, a level of stalking or voyeurism normal. In fact, you have followers. Now, just think about that word, (laughs) follower, like someone who is following you um, versus admire, you know, versus fans or admirers, even admirers is a little bit creepy. But are these people really your friends, your friends? And in this day and age, what is what is friendship? What does it actually mean? to have somebody who's going to walk by your side and get you and show up for you. Well, I have a couple of stories to really illustrate this. And then a letter that I wrote to a gentleman who, you know, like so many came in like a whirlwind and left like a breeze, just in and then nothing out. I think today there's a clever term of ghosting, but what it really is, is rude. And that's not what friendship is. It's not, it's not rude. So here's my story. Um, as an entrepreneur, you, you get so much information about how to use Facebook, right? About, about use it to leverage people, meet more people, access more people. It's a real form of advertising and connecting with people you wouldn't otherwise meet. Other For me, it's other coaches, healers, um, thought leaders that are living in different parts of the world, such as Bali or Texas. <laughs> um, and sometimes friends of friends will get suggested. And I recently had a policy where I was like, I'm not going to friend somebody I haven't actually met in person. It feels really disingenuine, but because I'm in the process of trying to grow my business, I uh, followed... I got a little lax on that and I allowed for this one particular person to friend me and his name is uh, Frank Hallett, H-A-L-L-E-T-T. And he he proposes to be a New York tier restauranteur who owns a restaurant and um, has lived in Italy, is currently divorced. And I know all of this because the first interaction we had was a simple one of of, uh, compliments of you know, you're really smart and I like your videos. And, and I was in a place where I was just getting back from a trip and sort of in a, the come down of after an epic trip where you're just like, ugh, adulting, here we go. A little heavy in that space. So this guy, Frank reaches out, I think, oh, this might be some level of like serendipity, which, you know, flash ahead. It was, I'll explain the whole thing in a second. What it turned into was harassment pretty quickly. Um, where more or less he thought I was attractive and wanted to sleep with me and was reaching out from that place, sort of like that online dating space. And that was not the space that I was holding. And he, you know, dangled all these carrots about going to fancy restaurants, about flying out, about buying clothes, like the pretty woman fantasy or whatever. And part of my brain that is trained to meet people online, it was like, what if this is really real? So it had, you know, wasn't as, I think, guarded. Then the other more rational part of my brain was like, this guy's, no, forget it. This guy's clearly a rapist or a nut job or, or just, you know, a uh, few rocks shy of a freaking bundle. So, and I own it too. Like, I'm, I, it's nuts. If you really think about it, if what is friendship, it's kind of nuts to just like, you can't really befriend some cyber person. (laughs) You can have conversations with them. You can let your heart out. But 
really? Is that really friendship? Or is it just like this weird f- version of like Catholic confession over like a digital stage? So the harassment came when I basically changed my mind and and spoke from like guarded, more rational place. It was like, no, I really don't want to meet you. And then the hounds got let loose on me. I got called a fraud, a liar, despicable, got my business threatened, um, had, you know, definitely he was saying, I'm going to ruin you as a coach. I know other people in the coaching field. I'm a multimillionaire. So I hang out with all these celebrities and whatever else. And in the moment, it's like a horrible feeling. You're like, wow, I've invested my life's work. I've invested my, uh, 20 years into being an entrepreneur and the idea that one random person that you don't even know could take you down for writing salacious things is terrifying. It's terrifying. It's also irrational on a lot of different levels because what they say is, you know, there's no such thing as bad press. He's like, I'm going to take out a billboard in San Diego. And part of me was like, wait a minute. Great. Take, you can say I'm the most fraudulent counselor coach out there. People are still going to look me up. There's no such thing as bad press. And I think that majority of my reputation stands for itself. I'm an outspoken, um, sometimes offensive, sometimes egregious, and sometimes completely on point counselor. Like I, I, I've, have if you look at all of last year when I was doing my podcasts, I was joking and laughing and swearing and dipping in and out from the the profane to the mundane, you know, from the things that really matter and touch our hearts to things that were just completely frivolous and had nothing to do with anything but me. And I think that that's that's an element of friendship that you really get, an element of reflection that's powerful, is you put yourself out into the world and true friends will be able to reflect back to you um, what's working, what's not, where you can adjust. So what did I learn? So I'm still being harassed. Um, Today is uh, Chinese New Year, (laughs) the year of the fire rooster, uh, the 28th of of 17. So... Um, you know, it's a transition point. And um, so I'm still getting like multiple phone calls from this person. And the steps that you take in these kinds of incidences are you block, and then you document. And if necessary, you document at a higher level um, with the authorities, the police. So you just do what you need to do to be proactive and, and get immediately out of whatever would be a victim space. Because if you think about it, there's a difference between toxic relationships, codependent relationships, and supportive relationships. And it's really easy. It doesn't matter if you're a counselor or you're, you know, God himself. Maybe, well, even in that case, because if God is within us and we are the represent- representation of that, then we're the spectrum, right? You feel the darkness and the light. You feel the heaviness and the regret as far as the elation and the victory and the confusion along with the clarity, okay? It all is, is just all part of this generative thing that we call life. It's all part of the journey. Um, so what did I learn? What did I learn from this interaction um, is something that I have had the intuition about for a while, which is, you know, meet people in person, have human interaction, let your whole body attune to the scenario, the situation, the environment, the words that are being spoken and, and, and the things that are underneath of them, which you can't really get from a photograph from this like still life picture. You can't, you can only assess so much, you know, I mean, again, it's a representation. So a lot of my pictures show uh, a variety of my sides. You know, I I post pictures about um, Oracle cards. I post Bible verses, which can seem in contradiction with one another. I post pictures of me with absolutely no makeup on and a hoodie and a sweatshirt and um, totally uh, conversely done up and looking like really Jessica Rabbit style sexy, you know, just like exuding this uh, lustful quality. And, you know, the, the both the puritanical side of me and the, you know, debaucherous sinner are, are part of my personality. I, you know, I, I think life is about living the spectrum. And that is what friends actually help you do. 
So in this moment, you might hear a click because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause and I'm going to read a letter that I wrote to um, a gentleman who came into my life and he had, he had a really um, catalytic effect, an initiating effect where the place that I'm asking for and that I want to go into is softening. Like I don't need harsh masculine push energy, rather a pull energy, an ability to have my fragile heart, to be able to clean out the, the demons in my closet, you know, the ugly things that you just ignore by swiping on social media or getting distracted or whatever. And, um, because this particular person was so wishy-washy in my life, like fully here, then fully rejecting, which anytime I get rejected, I seek to correct it. Um, let's say it together. Anytime I reject it, I seek to correct it because rejection breeds obsession. <laughs> it, it makes you be like, no, I have to, I have to reclaim my domain. I have to claim my power and I have to make sure that the other person like gets it and sees it. And, and that was the beginning of the relationship. And as time has passed, I've been really, um, in that period of assessment of it, it's sort of like you do when you, when you break up the three parts of the brain, uh, light up and the part of the brain that lights up is the, um, assessment part, the obsessive part and the, um, fight, flight, freeze, faint or fuck part, the survival part, um, all light up all of which, um, can be stimulated by certain chemicals such as, uh, cocaine or LSD <laughs> as well, uh, hallucinatory quality or, um, whatever else. So <clears throat> I-, I like to provide a little platform, a little explanation. So up to this point, let's bullet point, um, what is friendship and how is it so powerful in your life? Uh, and I think that this letter is going to really outline what friendship is. So, uh, hold please. Let me draw this up. All right, here we go. So you might hear a couple clicks of the mouse as I pull it up. Friendship is precious. In fact, it is the greatest treasure on earth, especially as time passes and the body goes through the motions of aging while the soul stays young. This juxtaposition is rough at times and is nearly impossible to navigate solo. So I've never formally offered someone my friendship before. And since the inception of our engagements have included a lot of discovery and reconciling conversations, I want you to understand exactly what I'm offering and in some ways expecting. Imagine having someone in your life that totally gets you, loves you, and wants the best for you while simultaneously knowing for sure that you are not responsible for this person's happiness, but you do, in fact, totally contribute to their well-being. Now imagine laughing a lot. Imagine facing frustrations with someone who will support you through them until you gain a sense of clarity and ease. I am totally pitching this. Stick with me. Let all of that sink in. Now realize this person is not your girlfriend or some lover you have tried to appease. It's me, your good friend, Rebecca Freedom. What would your life be like if you could just show up for a home-cooked meal and all you had to do was be yourself and do the dishes for reciprocity's sake? How could things shift for you if you knew you had someone in your corner that truly loved and cherished you because they just enjoyed your company? Moreover, sex had nothing to do with this exchange, but affection found its place in the form of loving touch. And this touch wasn't always physical either. Sometimes it was just presence. Being able to slow down enough to receive and therefore open to more of yourself. I think true friends help all of us get more out of life and more from ourselves. Most of my best friends drift in and out of my life, but there was a period of time in the formative years where we spent every week together doing something fun, talking, connecting, and inspiring each other. Life without deep friendships is just not vibrant. It is transient and unfulfilling. Sound without a sounding board is just noise, the kind of noise that turns into bad dreams, self-critical thoughts, and paralyzed will. For all the threats in life, both real and imagined, I believe friendship is a cure because it provides a safe haven to let go and to be held in. 
I'm sharing this with you because I don't want you to misconstrue one form of relationship for another. I don't want you to be like, she is reaching out every day and is so needy. What the fuck? Like you said, there is just this moment where barriers go down and you can flow wide open to the freedom that love provides. And this love is not romantic love. It is not to be confused as idealistic or spousal. It is encouraging and hopeful that you will find what is right for you. It is spacious and inquisitive. It is curious and liberating. It is honest. And it is what I'm holding space for in my life. So my sense is that we are both holding the seeds of redwoods in our hands. And like aspen trees, redwoods roots grow laterally in a way that turns one grove into a single organism. It stands alone above ground, but below the soil is interconnected with all the other trees. I do think this is one of those moments that requires a pause. It requires reflecting on the question. What do I want to do with this seed? What do I want to do with this seed? I would like to grow it and grow next to fellow redwoods. In closing this letter, I know I'm open to possibility. I have my preferences. And I think that this type of soul connection requires intention, attention, and a decision to choose it fully. I've done my best to articulate the energy of what I want, time. I want your time and energy, and I want to receive it, polish it, and give it back to you as something that is refreshing, healing, and nourishing. What is more precious and potent than this? Someone who will witness and participate in your life. Simply, friends. So have that. Have that energy of that letter. What if you have somebody, and maybe you do, that just you can be all aspects of you, and they don't judge, and if they do, it's just a moment that you can negotiate together to create a deeper sense of each other, a sense of knowing that you're home experience breeds confidence. If you let it, if you say I've been through that, and I know what that looks like. And I will tell you being harassed, having haters, having people post things on your wall is all part of the digital age that we live in. We are abusing ourselves because we give in to the addiction of illusion. So what is the power of friendship? It's the courage to open your heart and talk to the person next to you. Ask them questions like, is there a personal struggle that you're going through? If you died tomorrow, what would be the legacy of your life? See, we can have big talk and skip the small talk. The elevator is going to the top floor. But when we get there, have we left anything behind besides our pride. Let your pride down, barriers down, because the next person next to you could really be a contribution. And let me be clear, when someone comes to me, I consider them a messenger. And that messenger may stay with me for a day, for a month, or for years on end. And when they are here for more than just a quick, fast trend, when they show up as a true companion, they turn into something absolutely beautiful, full of beauty. And that is someone who is the keeper of your history. And you are the keeper of theirs. The memories that you know, are locked in our cells that are only awakened through sight and smell. Our friends are the place that they also dwell. So of the moments of struggle and strife and pain, harassment, being harassed by someone with a name, 
posted on Facebook means nothing. It means nothing except to say your safety means something and you need it to be able to live your calling, to live into your destiny. So choose your friends wisely. Those who would lift you up, who would stay in constant communication with you. These are three of the things that you need to do in order to maintain, to be, and to receive powerful friendship that will set you free. The first is assess yourself. Be honest with yourself, reflective, and engaged in self-discovery. So you know what you are willing to allow in your life and what things don't belong. That doesn't mean that you can't stretch yourself or get in the edge or be a little bit more compassionate, but it does mean that codependence will never deliver to you the satisfying friendship. I had a little bit of bubbles there for a second. Pardon. The second thing you need to do is be friendly. (laughs) Be friendly. Open yourself up to communication with people that are actually in your vicinity because pro- approximation, approximation is the number one determination of love, relationship, and friendship. Those who are around you the most, you'll most likely be friends with and deep friends with. So keep in mind that your environment is what's going to be one of the biggest factors in who you're compliant with, you know? So while you can reach out through social media and spread the net far, really the fishes you're looking for are in your backyard. (laughs) So be friendly to those that are around you and stretch yourself to go to social settings, social meetings, um, and maybe you use online to find where they are, but use it as a directory and not where to place your heart. And the third thing I would say about friendship is have a spiritual practice. Really make sure that you're right with God or the universe or Ali or whatever you want to call it, whatever the name is, because that that God is my supply, you know, and he will lift me up on high and I shall not fall to the depths of despair that I could succumb to if I stay unaware uh, that I am always cared for. I'm always cared for, you know? People that come into your life that bring harshness, that bring pain, they're messengers. And you might be a message for somebody right now. So friendship is powerful in that it's the reflection of the messages that lead us to living our destiny. If you want to know how to be a better friend, if you want to really know how to you know navigate this world that we're living in um, safely, then get offline as much as you can. Just use it as a directory, but really talk to the people in your surrounding areas, um, form groups, be an advocate for community, make sure that you ritualize what you do. Maybe you have Monday night meetings or whatever else, um, backyard greetings, you know, you have collaging or knitting. I remember being in the South, uh, at this place called Bojangles where a bunch of women were, uh, in the, the place knitting together. So whatever your circle of friends is like pull them in and you need about five, you need a little bit of an entourage to really balance you out, but let that be a place where you get to show up as you truly are, um, and that you that you know that you're safe there. Now, if this is something you're struggling with for forming friendship or having to break up with a friend or falling in love with somebody who's just, you know, online and, and making up stories when you meet somebody on a first date that this might be the one and you just are getting way, way, way ahead of yourself and you need to slow down, I encourage you to do that by reaching out to me at RebeccaFreedom.com. That's R-E-B-E-K-A-H Freedom.com. Trust me, I get it. I get you. I've, I've lived. I've lived it. I'm living it. I'm in it. And at the same time, I'm rising above it every single day uh, by just being the best version of me that I can be. So that's the invitation. Thank you so much for listening. Share this if you feel prompted to. Love you so much. Now go out into the world and get it.